Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create this halftone effect but with a slight twist. If you're part of the ProMotion crew then you can download all of the project files as well as this bonus comp where I've gone a little bit further with similar techniques and included a few extra little effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a new composition. This can be whatever you like. I'm also going to take that one and I'm going to duplicate it and this is essentially going to become our holder for our image. Now for the image what I'm going to do is open up that one. I've just sourced this image here. It can be whatever you like but basically all you need to do is just kind of use this composition as a holder. So once we've kind of got that, what I'm going to do is drag that holder straight into our main composition. I've seen this halftone effect being done before using the CC ball, which is okay, but it doesn't really get that. I find you don't have like the finite control. So I'm going to show you a slightly different method that is similar to the overall look, but I'm gonna add a few little extra things in there. So I first add a tint. Now you can find all of these by searching for them up here and then just dragging them into the effects control holder, which is basically gonna be the default, just makes it black and white. Then I just add a bit of an a curves. So just keep in mind that this is going to be in the background. So we're just kind of creating uh, a very sort of high contrast image. Now with that, what I'm going to do is just rename this one, say to my background. And then with that, I'm just gonna duplicate it. And this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mat. So with the mat, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna basically drag right up or down on this to really darken those, those dark points and then sort of really contrast that the light part of the image. So we want a, a lot of contrast. So we're just gonna turn that layer off because we don't need that one. And what we can do is then just drag in a clean holder so that we've got another one underneath. Now we're ready to start adding that little halftone effect. Now what I like to do then is add on a bunch of different effects which I've got here. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a tint. Now all we're trying to do here is we're just gonna hit basically like swap the colors. And all that's doing is basically just inverting the image, but we're just trying to isolate certain parts of this image because we're gonna link this to the mat. This will all make sense in just a minute when I start linking it to that mat, but that's all you basically need to know at this point. Next, I'm gonna add a Venetian blind. So the Venetian blind is just an effect that you can search for up here. And basically all that it does is it creates like these lines. You can control it in any sort of direction. Now the thing I like about this and the reason I'm using this particular method is because we can create basic little diamond shapes that then we can control the actual size of them. So what I do is I basically set the transition which is basically how far is it through that transition. I found that a roughly sort of around that 35% is really good. Then you can change the direction to that 45 degrees because we're trying to create a diamond shape. So we want it to basically be on an angle. And the width is basically how big the actual Venetian blind is. So we're basically by scaling it up, we're making it much larger. And by scaling it down, I found about 12 and you don't want any feather. Next, what we're gonna do is then add another Venetian blind. But this one, what we're gonna do is have it basically set up exactly the same, but we're gonna change the angle. We're gonna make it so that we'll keep turning it until we end up with basically like these sort of diamond shapes. Now the rough and edges, what that does is really just kind of make it more of these sort of like, you know, roughened dots rather than being straight triangles. So what we do is we select this as roughen. We can add a little bit of a border. Obviously this will depend on the image that you're using, but these are the exact settings that I've used here if you want to copy exactly what I've done. And then really what I find is you kind of already got this effect mostly there. But what I like to do is then kind of go back through and adjust the Venetian blinds. And this is the advantage of using this because if I want to add, say, make them bigger, I can drag up on this. If I want to make them, you know, have less space in between, I can basically drag down on this. So I'm going to make this like 19. You can see it makes more sort of Big, larger dots and then I can also just adjust the rough on so if I want less of that or I want more so you can see you've got a bit more control over how you actually want to do it now there's a few different ways we can apply this 
but a simple way is just by using that mat that we created. So I'm gonna come down here and toggle my modes, go down to my track mat and make sure that that mat is selected. Then I'm gonna change this to be the luma mat. And what that's gonna do is find basically the brighter part of that image and then basically, you know, isolate that to that part of the image essentially. So the reason for that is that we wanna create different dots for the brighter part and different dots for the darker. Now this is where that tint came into effect, which is basically inverting that color palette to basically make it so that if it was white, we wouldn't see those things on the white background. So we kind of want to have it inverted so that we kind of get, you know, that, that sort of color there in the backdrop. Now I can call this one blind light. And then what I can do is I'm gonna basically duplicate this. And this one underneath is going to now become a blind sort of dark or whatever you wanna to do to sort of keep track of, of these. But all I'm gonna do for this one is I'm basically just going to invert that mat. So now if we just turn off that lighter part one, now we've basically got those dots applying just to the dark areas of our, of our map. Now this is really helpful because now what I can do is I can essentially go through here and change the overall settings on that particular darker part. So if I turn my light part back on here, maybe I want less sort of space or I want these ones slightly smaller. I can do that. It's sort of like just sort of messing around with these to get different looks. Another way you could also do this to sort of mix it up even more is you could also create say like a solid and then add like a turbulent uh, noise to this one. And then you could use that basically as your map to sort of create, you know, different dots and different areas. So you can map it to that and then kind of use that as a way of trying to sort of isolate certain parts if you wanted to have different sizes all the way through. That's another way of doing it. Another thing you can also do is once you've got that, then you can just kind of go in here by having this tint I found and just kind of adjusting that. So if you don't want it quite so much, you can kind of just bring that up. Another thing you can also do is go into your background here and then just kind of dial back that saturation. So if you want to sort of see more of the saturated image, then you can add that on. Otherwise you can leave it sort of black and white. It's that sort of easy to sort of manipulate this however you like. Now, if you like creating these sort of animations and you wanna learn more about how to use After Effects to create all sorts of different video effects and animations, then definitely check out my Animation Master Course, which is aimed at absolute beginners. So even if you've never used the program before, it'll walk you through all the basics of After Effects right through to actually creating some really cool animations and effects that you can use in your own videos. If you're more of an advanced user, then check out my Animation Pro course. And in that, I dive even deeper into more advanced techniques, looking much deeper into layering to really create animations that stand out. Motion graphics and animations is something that has a huge impact on your videos. And it's a great skill to have, even as the programs and things change over time. These are skills that are gonna stay with you forever. And you can basically use that knowledge to really leverage those different programs or even AI generators to really get cool looking animations and effects. I'll have links to both of those courses down in the description. I've had hundreds of students go through them and get amazing results. Check it out for yourself if you're interested and you wanna learn more about how to use After Effects. Now, the last thing that I kind of did to animate this is I added a, an adjustment layer. You can rename that to how whatever you like. And over the top, what I've done is I've added the VR chromatic aberration and that basically just gives it that sort of, um, you know, RGB split sort of look. And to animate that, what I did is I animate the fall off distance. So I create a keyframe for the fall off distance and then I go across and I scale this down to zero and that kind of creates that nice sort of, you know, just soft sort of, makes it look a little bit more interesting. Then I also add just a vignette over the top. Again, you can find both of these by searching for them up here. These are the exact settings that I've used if you want to follow along exactly, but that's basically all that I did to create that. Now, something else that I did to animate this was actually by going back to the start with my playhead, and then I'm just gonna create a keyframe for both of these evolutions. So this is for the light and the dark composition. I go across to the end here, 
And what I'm going to do is if you say bring this up to like four or something, what that's going to do is it's going to manipulate those basically the rough and edges effect for those little dots. So just to isolate that so you can kind of see better what's going on here, you can see that those little dots are kind of moving around. So if you want more or less of that, you can kind of dial up the complexity or you could speed up that evolution. You could also mess around with more or less of that border, you know, something like that, or even the scale can have some interesting sort of effects. I see these effects being used more and more now through various things like Vox and channels, you know, similar sort of channels. Again, if you're part of the ProMotion crew, you can also download this project file and it also includes this bonus thing, which I go a little bit further on this particular effect. Apart from that, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can also check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of the screen. I'll have all the links for all of those courses and things down in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.